that would be actually a pretty cool costume, but yet so <laughs> messed up if you dress as Harambe and then drag a little doll on the side of you. Oh, no. <laughs> That's so wrong, man. That's so wrong. <laughs> that, would be, that would actually be sort of funny, but not really. But it would be. Are you listening? Damn. Okay, people, on this episode of the Hashtag Blackout Podcast, we go kamikaze on the ass with our initial thoughts on the new Eminem surprise release of his latest album, Kamikaze. We also talk about the home going of Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, all the things that happened at her funeral, all the things we wish that didn't happen in her funeral, all this and more on this episode of the Hashtag Blackout Podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Episode 102 of the Hash. Oh, shoot. All right. Sorry. 103 of the Hashtag Blackout Podcast. CN y tres. I'm Jared. I'm Jay. And we're back and at it again. Jay, what's up, man? How's it going? It's going. Glad to be off for three days. Yep. It's not saying I'll be relaxed, but I'm off. <laughs> You're I don't on. have to see work. I don't have to see work until Tuesday. So big facts. It's all wood. Wait, it's not all good. It's all wood. It's all wood. Range Rover, all, all wood. wood. <laughs> all wood, all wood everywhere. Okay, in my pants and everywhere. I was gonna say, man, it got a lot of connotations in that statement. So, hey. I <laughs> that's cool. Well, yeah, man. Um, yeah, man, same. I'm happy to be off. Uh, it's been a very, I don't know, just all over the place week for me. Um, yeah. It's, it's so crazy, man, because uh, one of my uncles uh, was killed in a, in a car accident this week. And it's just crazy, wild how, uh, you know, sort of trying to find out details, um, mm-hmm. you know, as they're coming in, I guess. Uh, and me, I'm, you know, so many states away, so not able to really get the daily update like I would, uh, you know, from family. Uh, but uh, I just know he was driving and uh, from from the accounts, it just sounds like an 18 wheeler entered, mm. entered the freeway and um, and smashed his car. Uh, and it's just it's just a crazy freak accident. You know, it's insane. Uh, but he was he was one of the good dudes. And, and you know, he lived with my family. Uh, you know, when I was growing up, when I was a little kid, all the way up until I was, uh, I was, uh, probably about six years old, uh, when my sister was able to have her own room. Um, mm-hmm. he was my dad's youngest brother. Uh, and he was one of the most top three, most generous people I know. Uh, you know, anytime I was, you know, in town, you know, when I had moved away from, from Houston, anytime I was in town and it was during football season, basketball season, right. whatever, you know, he had season tickets to, you know, to them, to them back in the day. So, you know, he would take me to see Texans games. Uh, I remember seeing the first Texans game with him. Um, right. and my cousin Flan, who's been on the show and then, uh, take me to Rockets games and all this other fun stuff. Um, mm-hmm. and not only that, but, you know, it was always one of those things, anything you ever need, ask me, you know, my dad died, you know, he always had that same sentiment, you know, anything you ever need, ask me, um, right. uh, did so much, you know, he, he, uh, was very integral in the part of a lot of his siblings and nephews and nieces lives, because at some point in time, he had a real estate agency, um, mm-hmm. you know, selling home loans and, or selling home, uh, you know, homes and, and loans and the whole kit and caboodle. And I mean, between my, my dad, after he had to medically retire, uh, you mm-hmm. know, some aunts, some cousins, um, you know, he, uh, you know, he basically gave them all the job and was like, Hey, come here and I'll teach you this. You do this, you know, come here. I'll teach you this. You do that, whatever it is. Uh, you know, and a lot of those people, you know, had gone on to enjoy doing that, you know, after he, you know, his business ended, um, in many different capacities. And, and, uh, you know, he was just, he was just a really good dude. Um, you know, so it was very, very sad, very tragic. And I mean, he lives like literally two streets over from my mom, um, and sister. So, uh, you know, so it's, you know, for them, it really hits close to home. He has a daughter who has just started high school. 
you know, I think she was just a few days okay. into high school. Um, you know, she's ninth grade and, and, um, you know, so I just pray for that girl, uh, you know, that she can grow up, uh, and that her mom will be able to, uh, actually, um, I don't know, raise her the right way. And her mom is my aunt, uh, but you know, they have been separated, uh, you know, for quite some time, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and she, I don't know, wasn't really the closest with my family. So, you know, mm-hmm. we don't even really call her aunt, um, you know, and mm-hmm. they, they got married when I, you know, when, when most of the cousins were already grown up. So it's, you know, it's sort of hard. It's sort of a weird thing to call somebody aunt when, you know, when you're grown up when you're grown up, you know what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. so, uh, or at least like that. So, yeah. So I just pray that that little girl, uh, you know, has, uh, or that girl has a, um, I don't know that she, she finds a way to, to make it in life. And, and, uh, you know, maybe, you know, maybe somebody comes in and intervenes and just sort of, you know, helps raise her and do stuff. Cause he did a lot for her, uh, mm-hmm. right for his kid. He showed her, showed her everywhere, you know, always make sure that she's either dropped off at school, picked up at school, like pretty much her entire life. Um, you know, yeah. while working mm-hmm. multiple jobs, you know, and while trying to get on his feet and all this other stuff. So, yeah. So it was very sad, you know, um, my Uncle Ronald, though, he was, was a great dude. And, and, you know, I'm sorry to call it, make this like sort of a ramble rant, but like, I don't know, go for it. You know, man, for me, it's been difficult because over the past, what, two years, two and a half years, you know, lost multiple family members. Um, you know, we lost an aunt uh, right after my dad passed away. Uh, but, you know, but there's my right. dad, it's my aunt, um, and then her husband. Uh, you know, our uncle passed away, um, you know, not too long after that. And they'd been together for so many years, um, Mm -hmm. 60 something years, I guess. And then, uh, you know, my uncle, you know, who was very influential guy, uh, you know, who was like a second dad, you know, passed last summer from something. And then this uncle, you know, who was also in that same realm, uh, you know, just passed. This is just, this is crazy. You know, it's it's just crazy, but it's, it's a, it's a lot, bro. Yeah, but I know that you know that, that uh, everything happens for a good reason. Um, even though you can't see the good reason in the moment, you know, you just have to. After you get past the initial shock and all the grieving, you just have to know that that there are good things that come out of all those relationships. You gotta find a way to take them, um, you know, with you in life, uh, you know, onto your next relationships and, and onto, you know, your, your daily current relationships. Uh, so, you know, Mm -hmm. I, I, thankfully, you know, from those three men, you know, I, I had, a I learned a lot, you know, got a lot of, uh, positive input, you know, uh, positive thoughts, positive lessons on, you know, how to be a man, how to be a black man, how to be, a man in this world that, you know, is not friendly to us, uh, you know, um, just, you know, how to be, how to be generous when you don't have it. You know what I'm saying? There's so much, right. uh, that, that those guys taught. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I think our family as a whole, you know, your, your side of the, my side of the family with you on it, my other side of the family, which is my dad's side, you know, I think both of the families, have a very interesting perspective on life. Um, given the fact that they're both, you know, both of our sets of aunts and uncles grew up in the South in the fifties and sixties, you know, and seventies, uh, you know, during the civil rights movement and where, you know, they could hate the world and they could have, you know, all these negative perspectives on life. You know, they have, um, Uh you know, a lot more positive perspective and a lot more positive attitude toward, uh, you know, many different people. Uh, so, so yeah, man, uncle Ronald, man, you're one of the great ones, man. Uh, you'll be sorely missed. Um, you know, but, but, you know, always remembered. So, um, yeah. yeah How old I was remember. he? He was just 55, man. 55 years old. Dang. 55 years old. And he was, I mean, he was less than an hour from his house. He was doing a, he was doing a delivery trip. Um, you know, uh, which, yeah, he was doing a delivery trip and, and, uh, yeah, he was in, he was on the Houston side of Beaumont. So he was on his way home to Houston. Uh, and yeah, man, it was just a construction zone. Apparently an 18 wheeler came in and, Damn. and, uh, and did it. So yeah, man, it was, 
very tragic and and uh you know someone had spoken to him you know like within an hour or so before that and uh you know he seemed like he was alert and awake so it wasn't a you know a he fell asleep situation um mm-hmm. i know he'd had some medical issues in the past but they don't you know they don't expect it to be you know any medical issue that happened to him while he's driving uh, and he was not a drinker at all right um you know not a drinker not a smoker so you know there was you know uh uh you know, basically no chance that, you know, he had alcohol in the, in the system. So it's just acting, man. It's just, it's so sad. Um, but you know what, man, I always remember his smile, always remember his positivity, always remember his laugh. So, you know what, I'm going to take that, uh, and his generosity, uh, you know, and, and just try to continue to pass, pass that torch along. So, yeah, man. So just, just one of those weeks, you definitely know? one of those crazy weeks. And, and sadly, my brother and I both, you know, now live, you know, so, you know, so many miles away uh, that last minute tickets uh, to get back to Houston uh, for the funeral, which, you know, we would want to go to are just way, way too expensive. It's too much. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's just way, way too expensive to be able to, to do that in such a short time. And then it's a short turnaround. So, you know, it's almost like. You know, you want to go and then spend some time, not only just to go for the event. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. So yeah, so we won't be able to make it, but uh, you know, which I, is really interesting. One of my wife's uh, friends, you know, passed away in Texas and originally from Utah. So mm-hmm. she, uh, so I guess someone in Texas actually live streamed her funeral. Um, you know, for all of her mm-hmm. family and friends, because he has a ton of family and friends back here. Um, you know, that still live here, uh, that couldn't make it down for mm-hmm. it. So they live streamed it. So I'm seeing if that's an option, wow. um, you know, to check out the funeral. I know that the church that they went to in Houston is a very like technology forward, progressive, you know, church, Yeah, uh, you know, very modern, uh, when it comes to, you know, all those things. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm seeing if there's a, uh, you know, if that's something in the cards, uh, we'll be able to, you know, somehow see that, uh, just to, you know, try to pay some respect uh, on the day of the funeral. Um, gotcha. But yeah, yeah man. Um, that could be nice. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. So other than that though, you know, man, this has been an interesting week. Uh, you know, we've had, we've had a lot of stuff, <laughs> a lot of crazy stuff happen in the media. Uh, and in, you know, just in, you know, I don't know, all over the place this week. Sports, you know, we got football starting this week. Uh, you know, we have final cuts from NFL, uh, you know, happening this week. Um, the Saints mm-hmm. are blowing everybody out, so I know you must be happy, uh, you know, in preseason. I'd be happy if I could watch a game. That would, right. I'd be happy about The Giants are looking okay. Uh, you know, they're looking like they're at least going to win more than two or three games like they did last year. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so. You know, so we got we got a lot of stuff going on, man. Got a lot of stuff going on, and and um, yeah, there aren't many really. You know, there haven't been that many new movies drop here lately. Um, you know that are that are super interesting that you want to go and check out. Uh, but you know, in in relation to that, we did do a one's got to stay Thursday related to movies. Eddie Murphy movies. We did. We did bad Eddie Murphy movies. So, and we, you know, we probably could have put some other stuff down, like a thousand words mm-hmm. or uh, said other one, uh, uh, Holy Man, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. Bowfinger. Oh yeah, there's a ton of old, really bad Eddie Murphy movies, but yeah. you know, it's just the first ones we came up with. So yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, these are the ones that we came up with. We thought of that, <clears throat> you know that are either not watchable anymore or never were watchable in the first place. So this week um, we have a one's got to stay Thursday, right? We did Eddie Murphy, bad movie mm-hmm. edition, which stays Norbit meet Dave Pluto Nash or vampire and blue vampire in Brooklyn. So these were all less than savory movies. Uh, they had a lot of good actors in them, but yeah, no way, no. So, yeah, Jay, you got, I'm sure you got the Instagram uh, comment section up. I got it up. Go I got it. it up right now. All right, here we go. One got to stay Thursday. Hooks, rubs, and spices says none. 
Okay, Vampire in Brooklyn, I guess. <laughs> Blow Your Pod says Vampire in Brooklyn. C.E. Francois 88. I like Norbert and Vampire in Brooklyn. Perfect Cast says, y'all out of line for putting a Vampire in Brooklyn there. Of course that one stays. <laughs> Wulong, Wulong Talk says, Vampire in Brooklyn is decent. Burn the rest with fire. <laughs> the Poor People's Podcast says, Vampire in Brooklyn is a classic. Okay. It's a classic, uh, Just Say though. Words Pod. Come on, G. <laughs> yeah. All right. Just Say Words Pod. <laughs> Vampire in Brooklyn all Excuse day. Me. Cue the great. Vampire in Brooklyn. It wasn't as bad as folks said. It's folks. Wait, it's folks as folk. It wasn't as bad as folks think. <laughs> B Rob, random rounds with Rob says Vampire in Brooklyn. J360 Productions, Vampire in Brooklyn was good. It stays. Starting five podcast. Norbert was a little funny, but I'll keep that greasy looking vampire he played in Vampire in Brooklyn. You can call. You can call this NYC biased if you want. Also. I'm just Jackie. Vampire in Brooklyn has to stay. Podcast Brothers. Norbert wasn't bad though. Uh, me, Dave can kick rocks. Okay. So I'm <laughs> guessing they, they chose. I'm guessing they chose Norbert. Yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like Norbert. All right. Let's see. Whatever Man Pod says. Out of the four, Vampire in Brooklyn is the best movie, but Rosario Dawson and Pluto Nash. Mm hmm. Damn it, vampire stays. I gotta stare at Rosario in a, in a dozen. I get I can stare at Rosario in a dozen other movies. <laughs> exactly. Ledge DVS says vampire in Brooklyn can stay. I guess. Q the Great responds again. Honestly, Norbert is a guilty pleasure of mine. I still haven't seen Meet Dave, and I think I suppressed Pluto Nash to the back of my memory. <laughs> Stakes is high pie, easily vampire in Brooklyn. Fade Excuse I key. Me. I gotta go with Norbert on this one. Vampire in Brooklyn, great, but Eddie Griffin and Cat Williams keep it hilarious and Marlon Wayans power tap. Forever funny. It's cheesy as hell, but I'm rocking with it. And if you don't like it all, I all and if you don't like it, all I gotta say is turkey ass. <laughs> Stakes is high pod. Did I say stakes is high earlier? I did. Okay. Uh, J Hook One, Vampire in Brooklyn. J and T podcast, Vampire in Brooklyn all day. Sir John Lee says Pluto Nash. Oh, wow. So it's a little bit more Pluto Nash love than I thought. And Norbit love, actually. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. So uh, thank y'all. Wow, that's big responses. Uh, like, what, 30 comments on there? So yeah, thank y'all for the big responses on Instagram. On Twitter, we got a couple uh, with a Angela Bassett, uh, you know, uh, biting the uh, mm -hmm. neck with the vampire teeth meme um, or gif. Uh, B-Rob said vampire in Brooklyn and vitamin K killer Kayla says Norbit in all caps. So she must really like that. She screams Norbit, I guess. So, yeah, yeah man. So obviously a lot more people love vampire in Brooklyn. Um, yeah, and you know what? I think I think we probably expected that. Am I right? Yeah, we did, we did. Because I think we talked a little bit about it on the episode before, uh, and I think we both chose Vampire in Brooklyn as uh, the mm -hmm. one to stay. I mean, Norbert was funny. You yeah. know, I, I I think I put Norbert kind of like in that lane of a uh, uh, nutty professor. For some reason, okay. it's probably just because Eddie Murphy played multiple characters in there. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking. He played like the the orphanage owner or head orphanage owner. Of course, yeah. he played uh, what was her name? Uh, the girl in Norbert, the woman in Norbert. Some crazy name I cannot remember. Anyway, yeah, he played multiple characters in there. I don't know. I, I forgot her name. Uh, sh now I'm now I gotta look it up. Why do I have to look this up now? I have suppressed Norbit well beyond the back of my memory. Rasputia, that was her name, Rasputia. So yeah, wow. <laughs> I mean it's crazy because I used to watch Norbit. We got we had gotten rid of our cable like long ago, years ago when mm -hmm. we didn't have any cable, mm -hmm. no streaming services available at that time. All I had was a DVD. 
and I watched Norbert pretty much every night for hell months. Don't ask me why. Mm-hmm. Still not my favorite. It just put me to sleep. I was gonna say I, for some reason I it remember you sleep. telling me one time that you watched Norbit, that you were watching yeah. Norbit, and I was like, really? Yeah, though? yeah really, really. Norbit. It put me to sleep. It put me to sleep. Good, <laughs> so you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. That's so funny. Uh, yeah. I mean, I definitely, you know. Got to go with Vampire in Brooklyn. That's that would be my choice over all those. I haven't seen Meet Dave. Pluto Nash was just uh, uh. and Norbit. Yeah, you know the the same guy. You know maybe he just looked like Eddie Murphy because the same guy that we used to call Bowfinger when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. Also, you know we also called him Norbit from time to time. So maybe yeah. he just has like that weird, you know, Eddie Murphy weird character look. So we just called him that. But yeah. Okay. Had Here's one for you. Mm-hmm. Best Eddie Murphy cop movie. Cop movie slash, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Let's just call it cop movie uh, authority type movie. So we got Metro. Of course, Mm-mm. Beverly Hills Cop is probably going to stay. Mm-hmm. Beverly Hills Cop 2, Beverly Hills Cop 3. Ooh. You got... You got uh, was it spot not spy heart it was I spy, which is kind of like a guilty pleasure, yeah, in and of mine. And then you have uh, Showtime with Robert De Niro. All right, so Beverly Hills Cop is like the franchise, right? Or is it just one yeah, of them? It's it the franchise. I gotta so let's, go. Let's, let's put it Beverly Hills Cop three. Let's take one and two. Oh, out of come on, Beverly G. Hills Cop three versus all of them. Come on, G. Why you had to do that to me? Cause you know what I was it's too pick. easy if I kept the one and two. So we're going with Metro. We got Showtime. We got Spy Kids. I spy. Or, or I Spy. I my spy. bad. And spy <laughs> Kids. <laughs> I spy Kids. Spy Kids. Oh no, I was, that's the wrong one. Uh, and then Little um, Hills Cop Three. Man, I got to go with Beverly Hills Cop Three because guess what? His his character is Axel Foley still saves the fact that it wasn't that amazing of a movie. It wasn't, it didn't live up, like, I think number two might have been better than number one, um, to be honest. Um, But, you know, number two and number one are are pretty much classics. Uh, But the fact that he reprised that role again, I gotta go with three, man. I can't, Metro, you know, was okay to me. Uh, Showtime, I don't know, I don't think I personally don't think he and Robert De Niro were that good of a good of a chemistry. Uh, yeah, chemistry. Um, I don't know it just just didn't seem like the right kind of pairing to me. Um, I don't know who I would put him with uh, outside of Robert De Niro, but mm-hmm. it just didn't feel right. Um, and then uh, I Spy, man, eh, whatever. So, what about you, man? What about you? I don't know. It's, it's a good call. I mean, of course, Axel Foley is a I mean, it's a iconic character. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. But I just don't know about the movie. Yeah, I Spy, of course. Like I said, that's like guilty pleasure. So is Showtime. Mm-hmm. I can't even hardly remember Metro. But and of course, I Spy. He was just a playing a spy. He wasn't really. Yeah, he was actually a boxer. But eh, I'm going. I'm. Hell, I'm gonna go with Showtime. I'm just gonna go yeah. with Showtime just because. Okay. I'm not committed to it, but <laughs> I think I probably watch Showtime and I Spy more than any of the other ones. So. Yeah, Metro wasn't terrible, but it was. Just, I don't know. I, I thought it was better than Showtime. What about Forty Eight Hours though? Oh, well, come on, man. That's classic. Come on, you, <laughs> you'd have to do that one with Beverly Hills Cop, like with the Beverly Hills Cop and all his other. Movies. Classics, yeah. Like I would all just other clay. I mean, I may actually just put them up next to each other. So the Forty Eight Hours series versus the Beverly Hills Cop series. You know, mm, so 40, 48 hours, another Forty Eight Hours versus Beverly Hills Cop one and two. Forget I mean, the three. You could. I mean, you could just. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you want to make it equal one and two, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, you could throw three in there just because it's you know it's considered part of the series. Um. I uh, I don't know, dog. I whew, that's a tough one. 
because because forty eight hours is really truly if if I'm not correct, that's really truly what put him on the mm-hmm. on the movie map in that realm, right? Like in the in the cop okay. map, the cop drama or cop um, action comedy map. Yeah. Um So is that so is that this week's one got to stay Thursday? Ooh, it may be. It may be. Uh, one group got to stay. <laughs> yeah, I guess we, we'll call it a uh, one franchise has to stay 48 hours okay versus Beverly Hills Cop take out the three Ooh, that's a rough one man that's a rough one yeah but we gonna have people fighting over that one you know it'll be another good one um I mean shoot bad boys franchise versus rush hour franchise oh bad boys most definitely you know cause right after two they just screwed up because mm-hmm. Chris Tucker's character didn't even follow his motto that he did in the first two mm-hmm. follow the rich white man. Yeah. Not even one, one single mention of that in the third one. Yeah. Yep. And they had the guy right there, you know, Come yeah, on, you're man. right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I don't know, man. So much good. So, so, so many good things we could, we could, uh, we could throw uh, into these one gotta stay movies or one gotta go movies, but yeah, I think that should be the one gotta stay Thursday. The Beverly Hills Cop versus Forty Eight Hours. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like take a picture of this on my screen so I can remember this. So, so we can put that together. All right, cool. Well, yeah, man. Thank y'all. That was an overwhelming, overwhelming um, responses that we got. It's really dope. Uh, thank y'all very much for that. And Wow, 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 wow. All right, cool. So now is normally the time where we um, drop in the voicemails. Uh, so I think what we'll do is this. I know that one is a confession, right? And then one is, or I guess there's a two-parter. Um, so uh, how about we do this? We'll play the two-part voicemail. We'll save the confession for confession time, right? Or do we want to talk about Eminem and the Aretha Franklin thing? Then do, then do this voicemail just before the commercial break. What do you want to do? Uh, yeah, we're we're uh, we're planning the show live here on the show, guys. So bear with yeah. us. <laughs> okay, let's let's just do. Uh, how many voicemails say we got? We got we have. Essentially, we have a two-parter, a two-parter, which I think is a promo, and then we have um, a confession, a promo for an event, yeah, and then we have a confession that's going to go later on. All right, let, let's do a let's do the two voicemails, and then do that one confession with the other confession All right, later. Cool. cool, 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 and then we'll talk about Eminem and Aretha. All right, let's do the the two. Okay, here we go. Let's do the two. <laughs> Let me, let me try and think this out. Let's do the two voicemails, the two-parter, and then the one voicemail. Then we'll do the commercial Eminem, Aretha, Confessions, and then whatever's after that. All right, cool. Here we go. How's that sound? That'll work. That'll work. So we're doing these two voicemails, then the commercial. All right, cool. Here we go. All right, so first voicemail. Here we go. Other than the upload 
But I, I definitely reshare y'all guys' stuff. Just like I noticed you guys reshare ours, man. So I thank y'all immensely. Um, yeah, I'm mad I didn't get the call in for episode 100, but thanks for using that drop I sent. You know, I hope y'all enjoyed it. You know, I was just, I was just on some shit at that, on that day. I think I was driving home while I was at work or something. I don't remember. I just thought, I just thought that was probably the funniest way I could leave a drop for y'all. You know, if y'all ever want to send us one, send it. I definitely play it, man. Right. And, uh, yeah, you want to, uh, you want a segment suggestion besides the confessions? Y'all should just have the, the Memphis Diva, <laughs> the Memphis mm. Diva, uh, talk segment <laughs> and just, you know, go over every single phone call she gives y'all because she definitely keeps y'all voicemail way more lit than I have. But again, this is my first time. But anyway, y'all, you know, stay up and oh yeah. I wish y'all could make the uh, the Black Sandy Call It Two podcast conference, man. It's it's one of the biggest undertakings that was uh, ever gifted to me as far as a project to take on. But you know, I'm about six foot three sixty. I think I'm big enough to hold that uh <laughs> hold hold the weight of a two thousand seater bourbon room at the Showboat Hotel on my back. <laughs> so uh, yeah. yeah. I wish y'all could make it. Let's see. Um, I, I think this project might be in my hands for good. Uh, I was talking to my man this morning who actually gave me the project. Oh, and he got cut off. That was dope. All right, here we go. So, second half. Part two. From Mayor Dan Dinkins. Let's get it. Oh, so just uh, here's a part two. Because I, I, this is my first time, I didn't know I was going to get capped off, but <laughs> as I heard you, man, B-Rob's voicemail, yeah, he got cut off just a minute ago, too. But yeah, Black Finity going to, too. Uh, again, if, if there is a part three, and it sounds like it may be up to me, um, and I mix up who I invite, I definitely got y'all on my short list of immediate invites. Nice. For sure, for sure. You know, uh, this cool. year, this year would have been good, but I already had somebody else. I had two podcasts to fill the slot of these one show, this one show that was supposed to come from Cali, but they couldn't. And um, I reached out to another podcast, and then my homies from Philly hit me up, and I had to give them the open slot because I had to fill it quick because this convention is only two weeks away. So, mm-hmm. yeah, man, I mean, if, if I do this again, if I do this again, save some of y'all vacation time, <laughs> and <laughs> I definitely will plug y'all in and hit y'all up. This is a great opportunity for all of us, especially all of us podcasters of color, to mix it up, team up, you know, eventually potentially work together, because I like to work with whoever I'm fans of. I always like to work together with whoever I'm fans of. Mm-hmm. I always like to help out whoever I'm fans of, you know, because this it, this podcast world is a is like a is a it's a each one teach one kind of thing. But it's also, as I always say, there's no competition in this thing. You can't see the next man as competition because we all got our own voices. So with that being said, man, it's your boy the mayor. Mm-hmm. Star Five Podcast. Y'all know the Instagram. Y'all can shout it out. Peace. Dope. I like that. Yeah, that was dope. I like that. Yeah, man. Uh, thank you, Mayor Dan. Mayor Dan Dinkins from the Starting Five uh, Podcast. And yeah, man. Um, definitely appreciate. Definitely appreciate the voicemails, and then also mm-hmm. the uh, the uh, what is it? The segment. The invite recommendation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and really the, the invite <clears throat> to the Black Finity Gauntlet. And, um, you know, if y'all don't follow the Starting Five yet, uh, y'all should j- definitely check them out um, on Instagram, the Starting Five with the number five. So the Starting Five underscore podcast. Uh, and yeah, they talk about sports news. Uh, they talk about other random foolishness. Uh, in the uh, you know in media and society, but you know real heavy on sports, 
Uh, you know, there's some Giants fans and Eagles fans mixed into that situation up there. So, you know, they, uh, they talk a lot about, uh, you know, they talk a lot about football, uh, and basketball and hip hop. Um, I saw recently, uh, they were out, uh, at the, uh, you know, Tribe Called Quest, um, uh, uh, the Tribe Called Quest mural, uh, you know, doing some, you know, doing some updates to the mural, uh, out there in mm-hmm. New York, uh, and it was pretty dope. Uh, to see that, but yeah, the the Black Finity Gauntlet J One Con, uh, September fourteenth, fifteenth, and sixteenth at the Showbo mm-hmm. Hotel in Atlantic City. Uh, you know, definitely hit up hit up their podcast uh, profile page just to see how to get tickets for that, uh, or you know, listen to their show just to just to find out how to get tickets for that. But yeah, man, uh, you know, that's that's a real dope um, you know voicemail for us. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely uh, you know shoot y'all back a drop at some point in time, for sure. Yeah, yeah, y'all do it big. It's it's fun. I think you know at some point in time, I think we should we could try to get on, you know, and um, you know be a guest on their show. I, I'm, I know that they've reached out about that at some point in time, so we will have to figure out on the record days and see if that lines up, um, or mm-hmm. get them vice versa on here, and we could do, you know, a sports talk style show. So whatever, for sure. whatever, whatever. Um, Anyway, yeah, man. Thanks for that. Uh, you have any more comments on that voicemail? It was, it was long and interesting. So, no, man. I, I, everything you said, I echo it. Yeah, you know, um, cool. you know, I, I'd love to go to that 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 Blackfinity Gauntlet. Mm-hmm. So, I, but you know, yeah, vacation time is woof. Mm. It's looking rough. Yeah, <laughs> I know what you mean, man. It's it's. Um... It is, it's one of the things, like, when you have it, you, like, you know, you save it and you hold on to it, like, Dude, like it's I'm, precious. I'm trying gold. to hold on to it, like, it's, like, it's my precious, man. It's, They're precious. It's my precious, you know, so, yeah. Yeah. But. True, true. But it's all good. We'll know. see. We'll see. We'll see. It's we'll all see. good. We'll see. We will see. When that, when it's time to. When it's time to, uh, you know, just hit us up when it's time for that next one to, to, you know, to drop. And we'll see if we can make it happen, man. That's all we could do. See if we can make it happen. So, dope. All right, cool. Well, uh, I guess we'll be back after the break. Okay. What up, everybody? This your boy, B-Rob, host of the Random Rambles with Rob podcast. While you're taking your break, using your hooks, rubs, and spices on your love boxes and everything, tapping them oh so gently and vigorously at the same time, I want you to tune in on iTunes, Stitcher, and everywhere else that you listen to your podcast and check out the hashtag Blackout Podcast. Why? Because we blacking out. Hey man, this is Chuck. We from the Whatever Man podcast, and we ain't out of here slanging and banging and doing wild shit, fucking with bitches and big ass white girls. We listening to the hashtag Blackout Podcast, and you should too, you degenerate bastard motherfuckers. <laughs> Hey folks, it's me, Big D. And me, Little R. From the Bro Rons Podcast. And you're listening to Jared and Jay on the incredible Hashtag Blackout Podcast. So when you're done here, check out the Bro Rons Podcast. You can find us on Potomatic, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, and Cornucopia Radio. Now back to Hashtag Blackout. And remember to tap your love box, baby. Oh yeah. <laughs> I just sound like a creeper. Oh, shoot. Damn it, damn it. I gotta get my fingers up out this love box, y'all. But, yo, anyway, this your boy, the mayor, that DJ named H5. Your mom's favorite fat guy from the deepest, darkest Africa. Host of the Star Pop Podcast. And you're listening to my people's hashtag Blackout Podcast. Now, let me get back to tapping up this love box over here. Alright guys, we're gonna to talk to y'all about hooks, rubs, and spices. Jay, what do you think about hooks rubs? I, I love hooks, rubs, and spices. I put it on everything that I grill, all my veggies, everything that we cook inside our house. Hooks, rubs, and spices is the one that we go to. I'm sure you put it on just about everything you put in your mouth, right? 
That's pretty pretty much accurate. Yep. Man, oh. <laughs> man Hoops, Robes, and Spices uh, has four great flavors. The Mad Cow, the Smoky Burn, the Lemon Pepper, and the fan favorite, the Smoking Sweetness. Uh, you can find them uh, at Etsy.com slash shop slash Hooks, Rubs, and Spices. You can also find them on Facebook and on Twitter and Instagram at Hooks Spice Rubs. Uh, if you go on there uh, and place your order, use the code MYHOOKS10. Uh, you'll get 10% off your order. Uh, so, yeah, go on and check out some Hooks Rub. Hashtag We Smoke Meat. Hey, everybody. So if you check the link in the description, you will see a link directing you to a free 30-day trial for Amazon Prime. Jared, how do you, do you use Amazon Prime? Yeah, I definitely do use Amazon Prime. Uh, Amazon Prime is great uh, because you get free two-day shipping, uh, free Prime video, Prime music, uh, and access to all the Kindle owners' learning libraries. So, like, nice. anything, if you're a Kindle owner, uh, yeah, man, uh, you can just download as many books as you need with that Amazon Prime uh, trial. And, yeah, like you said, it's free. It's a 30-day trial. Uh, so when you get to day 29, day 30, uh, and say, Eh, this may not be the right thing for me. You know, go ahead and tell them you don't want it anymore. But if you do love it, if you order a lot of stuff from Amazon, like I do, uh, it's great for you because yeah, it gives you, gives you that free Prime shipping and you get one click Amazon Prime ordering. So pretty stinking amazing. So everybody go ahead and check the description for the link to 30 day free trial to Amazon Prime. And we black it out. <laughs> All right, people, welcome back. And we're about to go and jump into this new Eminem Kamikaze album that was just released, surprisingly, after the uh, terrible, and I say terrible, revival album. Mm, yeah, the revival um, that should have just been. And, and yeah, the revival that should have just, yeah, shouldn't even came out. Mm-hmm. But anyway... The response from that revival album was what pretty much prompted him to make this Kamikaze album because he's pretty much going at every critic, everybody, mm-hmm. everything that that we've known Eminem to do or Slim Shady to do back in those early days. So, um, yeah, initial thoughts. I, I thought it was dope. For the first listen, I thought it was very, very dope. For the first listen, mm-hmm. this is pretty much what should have came out uh, last time, and not revival. Yeah, but hey, you know, it's a. Uh, I guess it's better late than never. Did I count him out after revival? Revival, I didn't count him out because we did have that one show with uh, the Hip Hop Amino Review Team, uh, where we talked about revival, mm-hmm. and nobody, nobody really liked. I don't think anybody liked it. Yeah, nobody maybe liked. one person liked it, but yeah, yeah, actually one. For the most yeah, I think part, one yeah. of the guys, one of the guys was like, "Okay, yeah, half of it's good." So yeah, but other than that, no, it wasn't. Revival wasn't good, but Kamikaze. I gotta say, Kamikaze is it's pretty damn good. It's pretty damn good. Eminem is flowing again, like we know he has some great punchlines, some mm-hmm. great tracks but as as discussed with uh whatever man pod on twitter i don't think uh i don't think i'll be listening to this album after like the next week or two yeah i don't have it i don't see it having like a whole lot of replay value after that maybe one or two maybe here and there yeah but other than that hmm, yeah i don't know what do you think from what you heard so far, thus yeah, far. I didn't get to finish the full album, but um, I will say this. Uh, yeah, number one, better than Revival. Uh, you know, I yes. don't know. It's just, it, it was better than Revival. So maybe, you know, <laughs> I don't know. You know so, sometimes I think uh, that some things are done intentionally. And maybe mm-hmm. Eminem knew Revival wasn't as hot as what he was trying to put out next. Maybe he wasn't finished with Kamikaze. <coughs> and maybe and maybe this wasn't even going to be called Kamikaze. It was probably going to be called something totally different. But then, you know, the backlash uh, and the and the, you know, critic uh, you know, the critic, uh, the critics uh, you know, and everybody who, you know, sort of trashed Revival 
maybe that, you know, helped him write a few more songs, helped him uh, mm-hmm. finish this up, and then he called a kamikaze instead. Uh, but maybe he knew Revival wasn't his best possible thing, but he was up against the deadline, had to throw it out there, put it out there, and he knew that it wasn't going to be great, so he was like, I'm going to drop something that's even harder for y'all in just a couple months, and surprise. Boom. So, yeah, I don't know, man, but but then again, maybe, you know, this is a, like you say, a full, all-out direct response uh, to all the critics. I think it, you know, it may be a little bit of both. It yeah. may be, you know, all the response. I don't know. But, yeah. all that being said, um, I he thought it was... go at a lot of people. Yeah, he did go at a lot of people. Uh, I, you know, actually thought that it was definitely better, uh, you know, than Revival. Um, you know, I'm listening to it. Uh, you know, the the one with Joanna Lucas is dope. Lucky you. Yeah. Uh, Not Alike with Royce the 5'9 is dope. Um, trying to think about what else I can't... I, I'm trying to remember the other ones I actually remember listening to uh, at this point. I hadn't finished the album completely. Uh, but I, I will say this. Um, like you said, great punchlines all the time. Uh, you know, he has always been great at, you know, connecting the dots uh, between two random things, um, mm-hmm. you know, and somebody specifically he's talking about, um, uh, you know, right. so he, he has a lot of that, uh, you know, in all these songs. Um, but yeah, man, as far as replayability, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not an Eminem hater. You know what I'm saying? I do, uh, I do appreciate right. and, you know, do enjoy a lot of his music, mainly his old music, you know, when he first jumped on the scene. Um, mm-hmm. but as far as replayability factor, yeah, there's, there's not going to be much for me because I can't play this around my little kids. I know that for a one, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, so, yeah, but, uh, but I mean, not even talking about around my little kids, just, you know, just around the house. Like I'm not going to find myself, you know, banging, you know, this music all the time. Uh, but you know, it's a good, yeah. you know, once or twice listen, uh, and you know, pick out the things that'll be on the radio and, that, and that's about it mm. yeah well, I, the thing is I don't even know if anything is gonna be on the radio for I mean at least not any uh any uh I guess hip black hip hop radio stations maybe a couple of the mainstream white stations maybe even some serious stations mm-hmm. but as well, far as like local yeah. radio stations like here 97.9 a beat something like something like that I don't see any of this getting played maybe Lucky You that's a maybe I think only um, Lucky You because Jordan Lucas but that's the thing nobody even knows who Jordan Lucas is much you know the, a lot of people kind of kind of got to know him from yeah. earlier this year when he started going over other people's beats but yeah other than that I don't I don't think anybody he's ever ever been played on the radio at all and, yeah you know so, but man, yeah, like you say, maybe lucky you. That's about it. Um, other than that, I don't see anything else getting played on the radio. I really don't care about the radio because I don't listen that much. Yeah, but, I don't either. Um, yeah, I, I just think it's a. I don't know. I. It's like part of me feels like, hey, it's cool. It's back to the old Slim Shady, but then at the same time, as I'm, I'm looking at other articles saying that this was like a complete fail because he didn't even have to do the whole talking about innocent bystanders type of thing, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. just throwing their names out there to get some type of name recognition. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he could have talked about other things, but then at the same time, he talked about other things on his last album and it was just like, eh, it just fell flat. Yeah. So I don't know. But with that said, you know, with those names that he threw out, he threw out Lil Pump, Lil Yachty, Lil Xan, Machine Gun Kelly, mm-hmm. Tyler the Creator, Drake, Charlemagne the God, DJ Academics, Joe Budden, Mike Pence, Donald Trump, pretty much everybody. He threw everybody under the bus, even a bunch of critics, like we said earlier. The yeah. thing that kind of kid that kind of got him in hot water now is because he threw that that f that one f word around. I don't know if I should even say it on this podcast, uh, but uh. Felicio? Free. No. Rhymes with maggot. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. And remember, like, way back in the day, that's what he actually got in trouble for. Mm-hmm. A lot. A whole lot. 
for throwing that word around. Yeah. But he went at he went at Tyler the Creator about um I guess I, I don't even know if Tyler Creator actually officially came out of the closet as being gay. Mm. But he called him he called Tyler the Creator that. And now he's like kinda in it's like the talk of the town now. You know, so a lot okay. of LG LG T L G B T Q groups are kind of going at him now. I don't know. I mean Um I do you remember what song that was on? By it was on Fall. Fall. Interesting. So was, the the lyric said, uh Tyler create nothing. I see why you call yourself a bitch. Uh, it's not just because you lack attention, it's because you worship D12's balls, you're sack religious. Sack, wow. S A C K. Yeah. Now, yeah. I have to listen to that one now. Yeah. I'm curious to know what, what prompted this because I know they took, they actually took a picture together like some some time ago. Yeah. Uh, it's got to be I'm something. I'm not sure. Yeah, it got to be something. I don't, I don't know what it, what it is. Maybe. Because Tyler is like the type of person that says, eh, "I don't like this. I don't, I don't like this music or something." He's he's like very open. He doesn't beat around the bush about about what he feels about somebody's music or, or something yeah. like that. But yeah, I don't know. It was weird. Yeah, man. I don't know. I don't know. I I, I was I'm interested uh, to hear or to find out. You know what his meaning behind you know a lot of this stuff is too. Uh, it's. Uh, Tell you one song I didn't like. Was that Venom? <laughs> the very last song, Venom. Oh yeah. Oh, music from that the sounded like it. Yeah, that sounded like it should have been on revival. <laughs> Is it that bad? <laughs> I, I thought it, it just didn't. I didn't like it. Yeah. At all. But everything else was cool, but Venom was just. Mm. Yeah. So, what did you think about the the surprise release? Was it? Was it like, I think uh, it's cool that he did a surprise release. You know, he's a he's one of those artists that obviously is a is a uh, artist that could um, you know people love or people hate. You know, and mm-hmm. there's there's a whole bunch in the middle. You know, so so yeah. I think it's cool that he dropped it because you know all the people in the middle. You know, sort of like us. Uh, you know that are that are probably on the more. Uh, you know, we appreciate his music, uh, but he's not our favorite. You know, what I'm saying. Uh, you know, we'll listen to it. Uh, you know, the people who are casual fans, you know, who remember him from dropping all his old shim, slim shady stuff, you know, Marshall Mathers will listen to it. Mm. All the stands, of course, will freak out immediately, you know, and they'll all say it's fire immediately. So, you know, they'll listen to it. And then even the people who want to dog him out and say, you know, he's trash because revival was not what they expected. Um, you know, we'll listen to it just to say, just to rehash that and say, yep, I told you you was trash. <laughs> you know, but um, yeah. I mean, I'm. I, I think it's cool that he dropped that. Uh, you know, and when he did, it's sort of a. You know, like we all said, it's sort of a big surprise. Um, you know, at this point in time, um, and then uh, I, I was thinking about something when you were talking about you know revival and and uh, you know reactions and stuff like that. I I think revival had a whole different expectation on it than this would have had um, even if we knew it was going to come out just because um, you know Eminem had that that long uh, you know cypher freestyle where he was talking about you know Trump and you know the government uh, Mm -hmm. you know that he for some reason got a lot of backlash for it even though he was you know speaking facts and you know dogging him out at the time Um, and then uh, and then, you know, it was basically like, you know, my new album's coming soon, so can't wait to, you know, y'all can't wait to check it out. Uh, so then everybody was like, wow, you know, he dropped some fire on the Cypher. So we were expecting him to drop fire in the form of, you know, 10 to 13 tracks, when in actuality, it was not. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was not, it, it just didn't feel like Eminem on Revival, at least not the whole album. So I think our expectation had been so dumbed down that the fact that he brought this and he, you know, That's he true. basically went back and hit all these people back and was like, hey, you know, I'm not the trash that y'all say I am. Uh, and I'm going to mention all y'all by name, you know, and I don't know, I guess I've always had the thought that, you know, if you have a problem with somebody, 
you know, go and talk to them. Obviously, face to face. obviously in the rap game, you know, you sort of put it on wax, uh, you know, and you talk to them too. Um, so I think it's good that he did that, uh, you know, and so it's going to start some conversations, may start some beefs. We'll see. But this, this is the other thing. Do we want people to start beefs with Eminem? And if we do, can't like, are we ready to see these battles go back and forth? Cause I'm not sure. I'm not mm-hmm. sure that he's in the same lane as like, uh, as a, like a Drake versus Meek where they're just going to post something, you know, every other week no. about each other. No. I mean, I'm I'm curious to to see this actually happen because nobody's really did it much. Now I mean, like in the early time. early days, I think uh, it was a, a rapper named Cage. He he went at Eminem on Wax a little bit. Um, Cage is, was pretty dope. Uh, <laughs> didn't hear a whole lot from. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he he's he's. I don't know. Uh, his whole like direction has kind of changed over the years, but mm-hmm. yeah, Cage was pretty dope. Um, let me see who else has kind of took jabs at Eminem. Uh, nobody really. Nobody's really took jabs at him. And mm-hmm. but I want I want somebody to actually. I, I'm just curious to see what would happen like in a real like, beef on wax situation. With yeah, with a credible MC and Eminem, because it doesn't seem like anybody really wants to go. Maybe they're they're really scared at that. Uh, yeah, because he's come from a battle background, and I know some battle rappers that say, "Hey, let's let's get Eminem back in the ring mm-hmm. to to test him to see how he does." Yeah. I'd love to see that. What yeah, happens? yeah, that'd be interesting. And then I don't know, man. I don't know this. Yeah, like like you said, you know, you look at the list of all the people um, that he mentioned, uh, and I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know who would come back to him. You know, maybe Joe Budden. Uh-oh. Maybe Joe Budden. Joe Budden will talk about it on his podcast if he hadn't already. You yeah. know, academics yeah. oh, will yeah. do a post. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but everybody else, you know, Drake doesn't want none of that smoke, especially after Jay, Jay Prince already. You know, try to you know put the kibosh on the on the push a T situation. <laughs> um, you know, which I think was a good thing, and it's so funny because you know now we look back and you know a lot, obviously a lot of people are like Drake. You know, Drake lost that battle, but if you look at the album sales and streams, I mean, we know there's a lot of Drake stands out there compared to Pusha T. But you know, you look at the the album sales alone, you know, and the streams alone. When his Scorpion dropped, it far outweighed Pusha T in a short time. So yeah, so you know, yeah. I guess I guess when you go back to the money, you know, when you go back to who made the most money off of this, you know, Drake's gonna 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 win that, um, you know. But yeah, but should it really be about there? the money and the sales though? You know, that's what should they're about. Battle really think but, think about. It. I said that's what they're about. That's not what it should be yeah. about. But that's what they're about. Yeah, they don't care. Yeah, they 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 put that out there for entertainment. They don't actually care. I don't know. There, I don't think I don't know, man. I, I'm just gonna say this: there aren't that many extremely popular mainstream artists that actually truly care how you feel or what you know what the what the uh, you know what the overall takeaway from their music is going to be. They're just out there trying to make some money. Now there are people, you know, that do care. You know, you got Royce the Five Nine, you got Tech Nine, you got. Um, uh, 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 oh, I can't remember his name. Bobby Sessions, you know, who who's up and coming right now. You know, people like that, they care. I think they care. Yeah. But, you know, you, yeah. you got people like Drake who puts it out there who's just like a dancing music, you know what I'm saying? Pusha T who's trying to come back, you know, uh, uh, from a long hiatus, you know, associated with Kanye, um, uh, you know, and, and he's just trying to come back, you know what I'm saying? You got Nicki Minaj who, you know, basically like called out a baby, uh, you know, for wearing her dad's, her dad's, you know, clothing. I mean, come on, man. She does not care. She sounds like the same. You know, if Nicki Minaj cared about her music, she wouldn't sound like Nicki Minaj that she had on her first album. That's what I think. Because she still sounds the same. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't see anything different. Her, her lyric pattern is the same. Um, you know, rhyme scheme is the same. The stuff she talks about is the same. I don't think she cares. I don't know. 
Uh, uh, yeah. I don't know. It's... Uh, anyway. <laughs> I don't think I'll be listening to this album, like, a, a whole lot. I'll probably check it out again here and there. Yeah. Other than that, it's just, hey, it's number one on iTunes worldwide. Yay, go Eminem. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. yeah. Good for him. Good for him. Good for him. So I mean I guess it's been it's it's already gone gold, right? It's already gone gold. Platinum. Uh, well I can't remember. I don't know, gold. maybe in like streams or something, but I th- uh do they even sell physical copies anymore? I don't even since this was a surprise release, I don't even know if they made physical copies. I think they do. Best Best but... Buy doesn't sell CDs anymore. Yeah. Um uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know. Uh, I just read something like it's predicted to sell 200k its first week. Hmm. So, yeah, uh, I don't know about the the gold. Maybe it will hit gold status. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure it'll hit platinum status because it's Eminem. I think he always goes gold or platinum. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know, but why S- we don't know? Speaking of gold. Yes, yeah, speaking of gold. Aretha Franklin's gold casket. So so tell the people about this funeral. Well, I'll tell you one thing. This funeral was very long. Mm-hmm. Very, very long. Very, uh... What, you got excuse me, people. I'm hearing kids talking in the background. <laughs> and, and it's throwing me off of my, yeah. what I'm, my thought pattern. Yeah, so it's very long. Very, uh... uh celebrated amongst many many people we had a lot of celebrities there politicians mm-hmm. um, singers actors fans the whole shebang mm-hmm. she had how many Cadillac pink Cadillacs 100 somewhere around there Wow, 100 pink Cadillacs out there to honor her drive her to the, to the church mm-hmm. there was some groping going on by a pastor on little area on a grande <laughs> there was some comparisons to Taco Bell about her. There was a lot of singing and hooping and hollering from Fantasia. Mm-hmm. A lot of great singing by them. A lot of not so great singing by Faith Evans, from what I read. Um, yeah, man, it was just it was pretty much just a big concert. Yeah. So, what can you expect from an iconic singer like that yeah. at her funeral? Yeah. Now, what I was exp- I, I was thinking about. When I first heard the news of her past, and I didn't want to post it up because I thought it was just plain disrespectful, mm-hmm. I was like, "Who is going to screw up her her lifetime movie, and who is going to mess up her uh, her little farewell tribute?" Mm-hmm. As far as like singing goes, mm-hmm. so who's it going to be? Jennifer about? Hudson apparently uh, had been handpicked by Aretha Franklin to do her uh, biopic, so. I don't know yeah. when it's gonna drop, but that's what works. That. I read that. Just not, just let's not put it on Lifetime. Me, me, uh, yeah, movies. it can't be Lifetime okay. Lifetime television station. It cannot be a Lifetime movie. It cannot be a BET special. No, I was, no, I was no. just, I was just actually, you know, while you were talking, I was looking up the uh, some information, the IMDb page of the Bobby Brown story. It's a two night, <laughs> two night BET event. It can't be that, man. You, you got to do a Aretha. You got. I mean, she is of the status that she needs a movie like Ray. You know what I'm saying? Like Ray Charles had. Mm, yes, 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 yes. She has to yeah. have one of those movies um, because she, you know, Queen of Soul, um, bigger than life. Uh, you know what I'm saying? She's a huge personality, and you know, huge, mm-hmm. huge, huge music to show for it. Uh, and so many stories. I mean, reading, you know, reading a lot of the stories about her life and when she was coming up. Um, as a musician and really when she was a young musician trying to make it in front of mainstream eyes back in the day when that was not a thing for black people. Um, right. uh, you know, she got a lot of help from, from people that you would not have expected, um, uh, you know, to help them out, uh, help her out and get her in front of a lot of eyes and get her on TV and, and, uh, you know, her music marketed itself, uh, you know, so there's, there's so many references to a lot of her songs. Um, you know, people know him and people don't even know him, but the respect, I mean, man, we, I, I think, you know, after she made that word respect, 
that became, you know, a lot stronger mantra and a, and a word that was actually thought about and, and uh, talked about a lot more than, um, than maybe it was, it was before, I think, uh, even though I wasn't a lot back in those days when it was actually, the song came out, but you know, it's one of those things we still hear people, you know, either spelling R-E-S-P-E-C-T or saying it or singing it, mm-hmm. you know, in a lot of capacities. I mean, shoot, there's the hashtag respect Ariana on here too, right? Uh, after she got groped. So, um, uh, allegedly groped, we'll say that, uh, on my accidentally, Tuesday. accidentally, accidentally groped. I'll say that. Uh, and whatever, but yeah, man, I think her movie needs to be, you know, a major motion picture. So, I mean, you have Jennifer Hudson playing the role. So I don't even, I don't think they could do this the lifetime route. I don't think they could do this the BET route because she has won an Oscar already. Yeah. So she's, you know, she is at the status where she can, and you know, we have seen her do that in movies, you know, sing and, and take it to the next level. She can do that. Um, so I hope it's a, I hope it's a, a big time movie. I hope it's a, you know, they, they throw a lot of millions at it um, and they get some great actors to portray a lot of different roles. Um, you know, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe Jamie Foxx can reprise his role as Ray, uh, you know, because I know they'd had some crossover or not some crossover, but they had had, you know, they had some type of interaction. They had, had interacted at some point in time, you know, so I hope that, you know, we could, uh, we get an amazing film out of it. But yeah, but, but back to the, uh, back to the funeral. Um, wow. It's crazy. It's, it's a lot, man. It's a lot. And it's like, I, I, I started, I, like I told you before we started recording, I started watching it mm-hmm. and wow, it was just a whole lot to take in. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I could be at that church service, man. I'm sorry. It was a, is, I mean, it's probably a, what do you call it? Like a sensory overload type of thing. You know. It was it was just long, man. Mm-hmm. I know when I used to go to church with my daddy on what was those whatever Sunday that was. I was in there for felt like five six hours. Mm-hmm. I was dead. I felt dead inside. Yeah, well, you know, black churches, man. They black churches. They 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 like to have service for a long time, and there have been. I've been to some funerals, yeah, that have taken way, way too long. Yeah. Just out and out way too long, and it doesn't make any sense. Um, so, yeah, I know what you mean, man. I know what you mean. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but any anyway, RIP to the Queen of Soul. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what do- we shall see how... What's that? I was gonna say so. So, what do we think about the Ariana, the hashtag respect Ariana Grande story? Your little backstory uh, on that, because I know you're the one who found it for me. Well, pretty much, uh, the pastor. I forgot his name. Um, let me see if I can look it up right quick. This is a Detroit pastor, Pastor our Bishop Charles H. Ellis the Third. Apologized to Ariana Grande for grabbing her breasts during a hug and his insensitive joke about her name after she sang at Aretha's funeral. Um, so pretty much I don't have the clip about her, her name, but anyway, he said her name sounded like something on the uh, Taco Bell menu. <laughs> Can't, it was pretty funny. Pretty funny. I ain't gonna lie. It was pretty funny. Uh, did she laugh? I, I guess she laughed. I didn't see the clip, but you know, yeah, she, she I guess it was funny. I think the, then, uh, the I whole he, congregation laughed. Yeah, I'm sure every yeah everybody, even the people watching online, probably laugh. So, yeah, that and then along with the the accidental hugging or, or grab pulling her in from the side to give like the little side hug, I guess his his fingers accidentally touched on her breast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, accident. I don't I don't think it was intentional. That would be kind of stupid if it was. It would be um, it would be really um, ridiculously dumb, man. Yeah, especially on TV with millions of people watching. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I'm sure she was surprised. I don't know her her reaction to it. I kind of see like little a little look. I'm sure she's thinking about it, but yeah, um, I don't think she's she's mentioned or, or replied to anybody as far as like what that moment was like. Yeah, 
Um, but but the, the the bishop he did apologize for for that. Did he say it was accident? He should have just and said he, it was. And accident. he came out immediately too. Like it's not like he, it's not like he like let it stew for a minute. Um, uh, he came out of me. Let's see what he said. Uh, so the bishop said, um, let me say, uh, he said, uh, I would never, it would never be my intention to touch any woman's breast. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. I guess I put my arm around her. Uh, maybe I crossed the border. Maybe I was too friendly or familiar, but again, I apologize. Uh, let's see. He said he hugged all the performers during the eight hour service, eight hour service. That's like as long as you're at work, dog. I mean, come on, man. Um, <laughs> think about you that. You should be apologizing as this dude in the background is like looking dead hard at Ariana's butt and mm-hmm. little short dress as yeah. she walked up to that podium. I mean, hey, yeah. Eyes. The eyes follow what you, you know, the eyes follow what they're attracted to, sadly. Yeah. Uh, but but his them. mouth is open. Like, yeah. dang, I want some of that Taco Bell. Like Fox, huh? Look at that. Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. So let's see here. Uh, he also said, I hug all the female artists and the male artists. Ella said, uh, everybody that was up, I shook their hands and hugged them. That's what we are all about in the church. We're all about love. The last thing I want to do is be a distraction to this day. This is all about Aretha Franklin. Um, I got up and then, yeah, that, what he said, um, what he, so what he said about the Taco Bell thing was, uh, I got to apologize because I have to brush up on, uh, I have to brush up. My 28 year old daughter tells me, dad, you are old at 60. When I saw Ariana Grande on the program, I thought that was a new something, something at Taco Bell. Girl, let me give you all your respect. Oh, Did y'all enjoy this icon? She's an icon herself. And that was after she sang. Um, and then, you know, people dogged him for that, even though I think that was a pretty, I think it was funny. And I think it was, you know, sort of a, a timely thing. And, and it sort of made sense. It, it brought some levity you know, to a sad situation. But he said, I personally and sincerely <laughs> apologize to Ariana and to her fans and to the whole Hispanic community. Oh, like when you're doing a program for nine hours, you try to keep it lively. You try to insert some jokes here and there. Um, I, I think that people read way too much into this. I think think sometimes people get but hurt too fast. Yeah, that's, that's true. I mean, sometimes we take a little things to... Uh too much to the heart you know mm-hmm. too literal so and then and then also the other thing is you can um you know these this day and age you can watch a video and screen capture any moment of the video mm-hmm. so there's some people who are like saying respect ariana you know look at the way that she's looking at him after he groped her and you know, obviously, you can see the situation where his hand is around her body, uh, and she she's sort of looking at him like you know, sort of like with her head back, you know. But but it's just a screen capture of the full video. I mean, come on, man. Mm-hmm. And then this lady said, "Men really need to get their ish together." I mean, come on, man. Come on. So sad. You gotta see. The I know. I, I've unintentionally did that too. Yeah. Before. I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't full on, he wasn't full on like face forward hugging this lady. It was a side hug. They're both moving and talking. There's a difference between a side hug and, and a full on hug, you know, and a groping hug. Yeah. There's a difference, man. I, I think there's a difference. Yeah, there is. There is. He just, he just made, it's just a mistake. Yeah. Honest mistake. It's happened to me. I accidentally, well, that, yeah, I accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I was leaving my my last job, like just telling everybody goodbye, and then there's one one uh one girl. She had one of these shirts with the sleeves were like super big. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever seen those. And I went to give her a hug, and my hand accidentally slid inside her sleeve. Oh, yeah. So that happened, and that really? was an accident. I wasn't I wasn't trying to, yeah. Yeah, you got you. You get what I'm saying. You know. So, no, I don't know. It's okay, man. No, I think it's not like that. Ain't no me too around the black hashtag blackout pie. It was an accident. Uh, yeah. You know, it was it was an accident. 
Okay, so let me see. How long ago? How long ago was this uh, service? Was last night? Was it yesterday? No, Friday. Oh, so Friday. So two days ago, right? I'm looking back through Ariana Grande's Twitter timeline, which is she's very active on there. Um, Mm -hmm. She has not responded to the situation at all, and she has she is she has uh, been tweeting, you know, in the past, (coughs) you know, less than 24 hours. So mm-hmm. I don't think she thought it was that big of a thing, you know, maybe, you know, and, and if she did, maybe she needs to go out there and say, you know, Hey, <laughs> uh, y'all are way overreacting. I'm looking at her Instagram, same thing. Her last post was four days ago. Um, right. you know, dang, she has 126 million followers. How? <laughs> wow. But yeah, I don't think it was that big of a thing. You know, we've we've all, I mean, I, I would definitely say we've all accidentally, like, you know, given a odd-handed hug, you know, just from maybe height or, or um, you know, just, just weird, you know, weird handshakes, you know what I'm saying? You ever had, like, those awkward handshakes where, you know, you and somebody else stick your hand out to about to shake a hand, and then, like, they shake just, like, your four fingers, and you never really get that full finger <laughs> hand right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. it happens. It happens. It's or weird. that that the the awkward. Uh, I'm going in for a hug, but they're not going in for a yeah, hug. Yeah, so you go two arm, they go like half hug, and you yeah. have to adjust it halfway through the hug. Oh yeah. man, I'm telling you, man. Or you go for the this is this is what happens, you know, in the office a lot. You know, it's either a fist bump or a high five, and it's just not connecting the right way. You know. Like your fist bump is that perfect fist bump height and angle, and the other person comes in, and they almost get there, and then they like high five your fist. <laughs> what? <laughs> Come on, man. I don't get it, man. I don't get it. It's, there, there's a lot of accidental touching. <laughs> that happens. Oh, accidental touching. So, yeah, man. But I don't know. Uh, Rita Franklin was a legend. <laughs> Let's go back to that. And, and yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it sounds like obviously they had an amazingly large and, and uh, you know, orchestrated service for her. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, that's, that was good on them for doing that. So I heard you saying that there was like an Aretha Franklin box set. Yeah, man. A TV, 10 DVD box set coming out soon. All 600 minutes of... Yo. All 600 wow. minutes of the funeral service, man. Wow, wow, wow. Everything. Y'all know I'm like That's crazy. Yeah. And as a bonus, they're going to throw in a, you know, scale model pink Cadillac mm. with white interior. Gold yeah, rims. That would be, that'd be cool, pretty cool. That would be pink cool. Cadillac bookends. Man. That would be pretty dope. That would be dope. All right, cool. That would be dope. Okay, cool. So, all right, so... Confessions. Now off of that, yeah. These are my confessions. Uh, so, yeah, we got got a couple confessions. We got a DM confession, and we got a voicemail confession. Mm-hmm. So, we got this voicemail. And, yeah, this is uh, definitely going to be the um, the Memphis Diva. Uh, you know, we're going we gonna, to we gonna say the con- confessions... Sponsored by Memphis Diva. I don't know. Name, yes, that's name good. Name it something like that. Uh, anyway, so here we go. First confession. Yo, this they lying, y'all, cousin Kayla. <laughs> y'all talking about these confessions. Y'all talking about these confessions and everything. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's a confession. I don't know what it is, but basically, um, I was driving my Uber Eats downtown and this man walked across my car and said who and I said what? who are you talking to and he said you who and so the light turned green and I had to you know go on so I circled back and he was walking and then I said that's why your ass is walking bitch and I felt really bad I don't know if that's my <laughs> Oh, no. 
No, 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 no. So I, I want to discuss the state of rap music. Okay, then, well, I got to go. I got a call coming in for an Uber order. Let me go take these people they food and hope I don't eat their french fries. Okay. Yo. So <laughs> this was this is That's just funny. just now confirmed uh, that Kayla drives for Uber Eats. I knew that she did something else on the side. I didn't know what she did though. So there you go. So mm-hmm. if y'all are in the Memphis area, you know what I'm saying. Um, y'all get the munchies and you don't want to go to the go to the you know McDonald's or Wendy's or you know wherever it is to get your food. Wherever. Hit up that right. Kayla. Uh, hit, hit up Kayla. You know on Uber Eats. I don't know if she has like a certain passcode that you could hit, you know, that, that will, uh, you know, give her a call. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That's, that's pretty dope. So, wow. There's a lot of packed in, packed into that uh, voicemail. So, uh, first of all, um, would you feel bad if somebody, you know, just randomly walked across your car, yelled back at you at home, yelled back at you and called you a hoe. And then you got the whip back around and you, uh, you know, you give them a piece of your mind. Would you, would you feel bad about that after? No. No, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think I would have whipped back around. I probably would have just said what I had to say right then and there. Peeled off, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I probably would have done the same thing. Actually, I don't know if I'd have come back around. Even though there's many times where I have thought about whipping back around uh, and saying something. Um, no, nah, man, it's. That for I mean, it's not, it sounds like you know the guy just said that with no basis. You know what I'm saying? So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you do your thing. Maybe he had a little something wrong with him. Maybe he had something wrong with him. Maybe he remembers you, you know, from a past relationship Uh-oh. situation. Uh oh. Maybe he is the, you know, cousin of your neighbor down the street that is stalking you. Possibly. I mean, there you go. I don't know. It's possible. Maybe possibly. he got you confused with somebody else, Kayla. That's probably what happened. He thought you were somebody Dang. else. But then you had to drop the that's why you walk it. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. Man. And that's why you walk it. Wow. That's pretty funny. Um, yeah, man. I, I, You know what, Kayla? We'll take that as your confession, uh, you know, so you can get that off your chest and not feel bad about it. But. No, nah, man, I, it sounded like you had every right to go back and say something to that guy. But you got to be careful, man. Mm-hmm. In these streets, you know, they, they got crazy people out here everywhere. You don't know what people carry. All over the place. You know, um, you know, you don't know what's going on. So, yeah, be, you got to be careful out there, lady. You know, we need we need your voicemails to keep our voice inbox lit, <laughs> like Dan said. So, For sure. So, uh, yeah, you know, you got to be careful out there when you, when you uh, you know, brushing up with them Memphis hooligans. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Memphis Hooligans. What about yeah, yeah, yeah? Quick, quick talk on the state of rap uh, and people uh, talking about uh, girls. You know, their girls are worshiping the devil. You, you hear that song? You know what she's talking about? I have, I have no clue what song she's talking about. Yeah, um, yeah, I have absolutely no clue. I'd have to check it out. I don't even know where to start to even find that song. But yeah, you know, it, I don't. Sometimes people just do things just to get attention and mm-hmm. try to get a name out there for themselves. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. I have no clue who it could be. Yeah. I don't either. I mean, there's like a list of... There's like a list of uh, potential rappers that worship the devil. But who knows? Oh, goodness. Okay. <laughs> All right. There's quite a list, but yeah, I'm not sure about that. But you know what? We, you know, Kayla, we we talked about this before on how we sort of feel about the state of rap currently, and it's a weird spot, man. Um, you got legends, you know, trying to hold on. You got legends dropping fire, like you know Bun B did this week. Um, you not you got new guys dropping fire, like Bobby Sessions did recently. Uh, you know, you got. You got guys that are that are, you know, legendary, and still young. Uh, you know, like uh, like what's his name, Kendrick. Uh, you know, dropping good music. Um, and then you have all of these uh, little somebodies, the uh, the candy rappers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> candy rappers. Yeah, they're the candy rappers. You got guys like Six Nine. You know, 
you, you have no clue what's going on with him, uh, you know, on a daily basis, other than the fact that he's, you know, awaiting trial now, I guess. Uh, you have uh, yeah. little pumps and little Zans and little Uzis and little Yachty's and little everybody. You know what I'm saying? And then you got singing rappers. Here's the thing, I think. I I think it's pretty much our fault. Mm-hmm. Not not just you and I, but it's because we keep talking about them. Mm-hmm. True. You know, we we don't talk about the ones that really uh that really are trying to to make a I guess a a change or has something to say. Mm-hmm. We just want to focus on how dumb and ignorant the the ones that are coming out and and trying to make a name for themselves with some ignorant yeah. ignorant music and we keeping their names in the spotlight, in the limelight. Yeah. So I think it's pretty much I think it's partly our our fault yeah. for doing that. True, you true. Know, partly, partly. You know, but you know, I think we should just start stop focusing on them, start talking about the people who who are making good music Mm -hmm. and having something different to say not the same same old same old thing yeah you know so that's pretty much how I feel about it yeah for sure and really people who are trying to um, people are trying to you know make a way and make a name for themselves you know up and coming Sir John Lee you know what I'm saying Mm -hmm. Melissa B which we've had on you know as a as a uh, R&B artist or a pop you know R&B artist um, she just dropped some new fire yeah I just I just downloaded actually Uh, and then uh, you know EVD um, Mm -hmm. Manny Mac you know all these young cats that are trying to make it you know trying to find their lane and they're not trying to do it the traditional way uh, where they sell their soul if you will Um, you know let's talk about all these people you know what I'm saying? Max Moore Deep, uh, you know, Chuck from What A Man Podcast, cousin. Uh, you know, we got to gotta find a way to get him on the show at some point in time, too. So there's so many, you know, guys and girls out here who are doing it uh, in a non-traditional way. And yeah, man, uh, that's that's who should be on our on our um, on our radar. On our, radar. On our yeah. talked about this. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I let's see here. Next confession. So you said we got one in DMs, right? Yeah, we got one in the DMs confession. And speaking of Mr. Manny Mackins, mm-hmm. this comes from him. Oh, okay. So he says, my confession is I love exotic women because they speak to me colorfully and they love the fact that I'm mixed. I want to have kids with a woman who is Native American because they know the struggle. Wow. That's it. Man. Hey, you know that's what, Manny man? Mackin's confession to us. You know what, Manny? That's that's the dope confession. And I'm gonna tell you what, man. Of anybody in these in the USA, you know, Native Americans, I would say could probably share the fact that that that, that, that they know the struggle, uh, just like us. Because yeah, you know, if you look at the fact that their land is probably even worse. Yeah, I think worse. They they got it a lot worse. You know. Not only, you know, were some of them taken or kicked out of their situation, their land was taken. Like, absolutely taken. Land taken. Wow. Yeah, I mean, pretty much just wiped them all out. Mm-hmm. Extinction. Mm-hmm. Practically, you know. Uh, they pushed these people to, uh, push them to, uh, you know, segregated areas called reservations. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's bad. And like whenever whenever you get reservations for like a restaurant or, you know, something like that, you never think about the mm-hmm. fact that, you know, that there's people actually living on things called reservations. That is not the funnest of places. You know what I'm saying? No. It's not. Nope. <laughs> you know, it's not. Um, it's not like going out, you know, to to a five course meal or whatever. It's living in a place where some of these places, they don't even have electricity. Uh, to this day, they don't have electricity. They don't have cell phone towers. You know, they may or may not have running water nope. to the community. It's crazy. Man. The uh, suicide rates are high. Yeah, suicide, the alcohol. Conditions they're in. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot, lot of things they're not, they don't have access to. Yep. So, yeah, man. That we're lucky we do have access to. 
No, you're right. So yeah, I, I think you're right on the fact that you know that you think that they know the struggle. So yeah, um, that was good. <coughs> yeah, that yeah was good. Yeah, so that was confession. Anybody else want to send us a confession? Hit us up three eight five three B L A K P C. This three eight five three two five two five seven two. Maybe my wife and call can call in and give us a confession. Mm-hmm. Maybe she knows some some friends that can call and give us a confession. Facts. I'm sure she does. Maybe 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 I'll call in anonymously and give a confession. Ooh, that'd be interesting. Or I could just do it on the show. Or you can but just I'm, do it on the show. Not right now. Okay. Not right now. Okay. 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 Well, uh, let's see here. So we got that confession that we got. Let's see here. We do have some relationship advice that was given to us to give. uh, And it was posted by Jay from the JM Brady 360 um, uh, network of shows. So let's go ahead and play this. We'll get on to this relationship advice. It's 2018, right? And we're still worried about the same old crap. Sure, we can't solve any of our important problems, no, but we gotta worry about little things such as, like, relationship life and all that crazy stuff. Like, relationships are not easy for anybody, especially when you get older. You gotta do the best you can and try to meet somebody that actually vibes with you the best way it can be. Now, everybody's scared, but also everybody is nosy and loves to start stuff, too. The contradiction in the uh, conflict of interest around here is amazing now. I mean, so what exactly is everybody looking for? The most perfect person in the world? It doesn't exist. You're going to have to deal with shit people, and then you're just going to have to find ones that are less shittier than others. So, happy hunting all. Get over yourselves. And stop feeding your ego. Just keep looking and keep playing the game. That's what I do. You know... (laughs) There you go. He said it's what he did. So, yeah, man. Wow. Shout out to to Jay and Brady for that post uh, mm-hmm. and that tag on that. So, oops, sorry, sorry. Uh, but yeah, um, it's true, man. You know, uh, 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 you just have to find you know somebody that you vibe with. You know, I, I appreciate that sentiment. Um, I'm gonna say this. Yeah. I'm not going to name my friend's name, but I have a friend who, you know, is, is recently, uh, you know, within the past year out of a marriage, uh, you know, that lasted for, I can't remember how many years, but it's been, you know, for years, uh, they dated for a long time. I think they were together for a total of about 13 years, uh, including like a year, uh, breakup. Right. Um, so you know, they, they, the, 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 one of the partners cheated on my friend, or I guess not one of the part, you know, my friend's partner cheated on her. Uh, and you know, so now, you know, she's back in the dating pool and, uh, you know, if you think about it 13 years ago, you know, the DM game, the texting game, the, the, the whole relationship, the whole online dating thing, like, you know, apps, all this stuff was, excuse me, way totally different, you know, when she got into this relationship or before she was in this relationship with this last guy compared to now, you know, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's people I know who get, uh, you know, they'll get a handful of emails or DMS, uh, or, you know, text messages, you know, from, from people, you know, on a daily basis, on a weekly basis saying, Hey, you know, let's go out to dinner. Hey, you know, I want to hang out with you. Hey, blah, blah, blah. It's a whole different ball game now, man. I, I can't, I don't know. I can't understand, you know, how the people in the date game do it right now, um, you know, compared to the way that, you know, we met and, uh, you know, back in the day, dated our wives. Yeah, back in the day. So, yeah, man, um, you know, you can't be hung up on on a lot of little stuff, you know, go and find somebody that's that's right for you. And if they aren't bounce, find somebody else, you know. Um, this is my question though because I, I, I had to talk with this friend uh, you know here recently you know she was talking about you know a, a certain situation so so let's just say that 
you know, you're dating someone, you like them, they like you, they're all in, right? They have already professed, hey, you know, you're the one for me. Um, I can't, you know, mm-hmm. I can't see myself, uh, you know, with anybody else. You know, I, I think, mm-hmm. you know, I think that we should, you know, obviously become exclusive and, you know, we should just take this to the next level. But you, on the other hand, are still not completely sure. You do really like this person. Right. You are super into them. Um, but, you know, it's also one of these situations where uh, you're like, um, you're like, okay, I'm still dating. I'm not 100% ready, you know, and you are the opposite of everything that I normally would, or not everything, but you're the opposite in a lot of ways of everything that I would normally, uh, you know, go after, you know, whereas some other people may be, you know, more along the normal attraction that I have. Even though my worst experiences in the past have been with people I'm normally attracted to, uh, you know, which is, you know, you're not, um, uh, you know, you're the opposite of what I nor- I'm normally attracted to. So, you know, I'm, I'm not sure yet. So this is my question for you, Jay, and for the people out there. In that situation, say, you know, what you always been attracted to, you know, has hurt you in the past. So now you're looking a different route, right? You're looking for some, you're, you're mm-hmm. into somebody different now. Mm-hmm. Is it better to stay away from what you're always used to? Is it, is it better to go out on a limb try something different instead of staying in the same lane what do you think um if you keep coming up short with what you always used to then yeah you you should probably try to venture out and do something different or get with somebody that's different i mean but then of course at the same same token you gotta be attracted to this person not not necessarily saying physically but you know i guess uh oh yeah physical have some type of mental connection yeah physical mental attraction yeah all there yeah that makes sense yeah yeah so i mean yeah i mean it's good to, to to go out and venture um maybe see what the negatives or the cons were like the pros and cons of the 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 previous you know people you dated may sound corny but make a list (laughs) make a list pros and cons what what is it about the person you didn't like and try to make the connection between all the people that didn't work out yeah and then uh you know then you'll know where where you need to go yeah yeah exactly i think i think that sounds i think that sounds good uh you know don't commit until you're absolutely ready um you know, because you got to work on you. And if you bring yourself not fully committed into a situation with somebody, you know, that's, yeah. that's, uh, you know, that's not fair to the other person. Um, yeah. but I say, don't disrespect the current relationship mm-hmm. you have to try to seek out another relationship at the same time, work yeah. on what you have. If you're not, if you're not into it, just bounce and do your thing. But if you mm-hmm. are into it, you know, you've gotten to a certain point, you are into it. You know, definitely, definitely work on that. And um, yeah, man, uh, you know, try to make it work. Try to make it happen. Yeah. Um, now, the crazy, the crazy thing is, you know, you get these people that are in these uh, arranged type marriages. Mm-hmm. They just they just kind of sort of have to deal with it. I know that's, you know, and they have to learn to love each other. Yeah, you know, that's true. And that's that's crazy. You know, the, the sad part is, you know, there's a lot of people you know, a lot of older people, uh, really, um, uh, that are around our grandparents, you know, what, what would be our grandparents age, uh, mm-hmm. you know, that had that situation happen to them. Like they were maybe not necessarily arranged, but they, you know, were, they, I don't know, they just didn't get together as naturally as, as it would have been. Um, yeah. Just I mean, it's, other, so. I actually have a, a friend that used to work with me. She was, in that same type of hmm. type of uh, thing where her parents kind of set kind of had this <clears throat> excuse me had this thing where they set them up and of course she's from where the heck was she from she's from Pakistan mm-hmm. you know I mean Indian. I think her current her husband now I think they thing I forgot if their parents kind of set them up together mm-hmm. yeah it was something like that so it was pretty much 
not arranged marriage, but most kind of like an arranged meeting mm-hmm. of the two. Mm-hmm. You know, and I mean that could happen today. You know, your parents could kind of set you up and point you in the direction of somebody else. But yeah, you know, it's a uh, you know it, it it still happens depending on the culture you're you're in. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I think that is definitely true. Um, yeah, man, it's it's wild. It's it's a wild situation. Wild situation. Oh, okay. Here we go. Last relationship advice thing. So this is from Hello Chrissy. Right. So I'm 31 years old. My uh, partner is 36. I have a daughter who's who's turning eight. I work full time and I'm the only one supporting her. This is this is the lady uh, Chrissy saying this. So I'm the only one supporting her. I have my own apartment, my own car, etc. I pay everything for her. Dentist, glasses, gymnast. Clothes, uh, gymnastics, clothes, food. I provide her with a place to live, a car to do things, food, shelter, medical care, toys, games, gifts, everything. I've been dating someone for a year or two. Uh, he's wonderful. Uh, he's wonderful. My daughter he spends lots of time with her. He takes her out for walks, buys her lots of treats like ice cream. This person lives nearby with his parents. Uh, mm-hmm. He doesn't work. His mother works huh. and provides everything in the household even gives him cash. He often makes us take dinner. He often makes us dinner or takes us out to eat and pays. This person doesn't have a job, nor are they looking. They want to be a musician, play piano, write a book, start a business, selling records, etc. They have never made an actual any actual progress mm-hmm. doing any of these things. He doesn't live with me. He hasn't offered to live with me or, or have me move in. He doesn't help me with any of my finances. Uh, when it comes to actually paying rent and putting food on the table, it's all me. Whenever he says, I'm going to do X, Y, Z, I don't trust him. It never happen- happens. Nothing ever comes of it. I'm in the middle of my work shift as I write this, and I just can't anymore. I don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. No one has ever treated me and my daughter better. If we're not with him, uh, we are just alone again. But I can't commit myself to someone who doesn't work and isn't really willing to. I don't know what to do. I've tried talking to him about it before, but uh, he just shuts down. It becomes an argument and he'll stop talking to me for a while. It's starting to hurt my feelings, though, uh, when he talks about the business he's going to start, quote unquote, business he's going to start uh, while I'm getting up at 5 a.m. to make a paycheck to feed my daughter. There you go, man. That dude's a bum. He's a bum, Straight man. Straight up. You you need to you need to kick him kick him to the curb, you know. Yeah. If he mooching off his parents. How old you say they were? Like thirty something? Uh he is thirty six. She is thirty one. Nah, oh no, nah, no, nah, B. Nah, you can't be thirty six still living with your parents and getting their money. And then you not you not making any progress on your own goals. Yeah. Nah. He just gonna hold you back So Yeah It it, it just sounds like She's trying to uh, Accommodate for You know The daughter I guess Having a Father figure In her life maybe Mm -hmm. Uh, Because she say You know Daughter loves him dearly She just doesn't Want to be alone Yeah No I don't You gotta You gotta do something Better It's a lot of other guys out there that I'm sure are willing to take his place that actually have a job and have goals. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's what I'd say. Yeah, I am. Um, yeah, man, I, I agree that the dude's a bum. Uh, you know, he is obviously mooching, uh, you know what I'm saying? Mooching off his parents. Uh, you know, it doesn't sound like he's trying to mooch off of you, but essentially everything he is paying for, it, it sounds like it's from his mom. Um, it sound, like you said, it sounds like he hasn't made a dollar uh, on his own. Um, so that's it's crazy, you know, and, and, you know, it seems like more and more this day and age, people want to become a singer. They want to become a rapper. They want to become a fashion designer. You know, they want to they do all this stuff. Um, but... You know, their their Instagram version of themselves wants to do that. The real life version, you know, may not want to do that, or maybe they do, and hey, they just not put it in for the a second. Work. All right. While we wait for Jay to come back. Um, 
Yeah, go on over to Hooks, Rubs, and Spices webpage. Uh, it's hooksrubsandspices.etsy.com and get yourself some Hooks Rub. Um, Hooks Rub just, uh, you know, sold out at the Daybreak Farmers Market up, up in Utah. These people don't even know what to do, man. They, they, they love it so much. So that's a, uh, that's a blessing. So yeah, go and bless yourself and get some Hooks Rub. Uh, uh, there's two codes that you can use right now. Um, whatever man for Chuck and Jerm from the Whatever Man Pod, and also 3R Show for B-Rob and the Random Rob, uh, Random Ramblings with Rob Show. Um, uh, you know, so go check out their their shows, you know, and go use those promo codes uh, on Hooks Rub. Sprinkle some meats all over every, uh, sprinkle some Hooks Rub all over your meats, all over everything. Um, you know, repost a picture, uh, use that hashtag, We Smoke Meat. Uh, use that, um, you know, and tag hooks, shrubs, and spices, and they will, you know, respond, give you a shout out, say thank you, repost it. Um, yeah, so check out hooks, shrubs, and spices, one of our sponsors. Other sponsor, Boss Boxes, like we said before. If you're a gamer, go get yourself a cool crate full of some dope stuff uh, to trick out your controllers or, uh, you know, stickers for your system. Or, uh, you know, some fun energy drink to keep you up through tonight to play the video games. Um, Boss Boxes is dope. You don't have to be committed to a subscription. You can get one single box. Uh, So, yeah, uh, whether you're PS or you are Xbox, um, yeah, man, Boss Boxes is the thing for you. So check out BossBoxes.com. You know, put in our code BLACKOUT10 to get 10% off your order uh, and get you some dope stuff for your gaming experiences. Hello, I'm back. That's dope. You know what? Like in that time frame, I basically dropped too many commercials for our sponsors. So that was oh, good. Dope. Good job. Perfect timing. <laughs> you, Ooh, you clicked man, on. You clicked on like two, somebody, like a second after I finished. So perfect. I had a mini breakdown. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. All right. I had to go handle anyway. that. Handle that. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Yeah. So back to that dude being a bum. Yeah. <laughs> So you got to kick him to, I mean, I know that you're going to be back on your own. If this guy shuts down and doesn't, you know, want to have a conversation about something that's serious, especially if he's trying to commit, you know, he wants you to commit, especially if, if, um, you know, if he's going to be in your life like that, he has Mm -hmm. to have some kind of gainful employment just to make it equal, you know, just to give y'all a 50, 50 situation. Because if you don't, if you do commit, eventually I mean this stuff's going to keep coming up and eventually it's going to come to a head uh, uh, and you're going to have to kick him out you know what I'm saying Um, and it won't be a good ending to the relationship uh, that seems like it's going okay so far so yeah uh, if he's not willing to commit man you you just got to bounce and you will find someone better yep and I'm not saying him willing to commit and just say yeah I'm going to do XYZ I'm saying like you know he'll say that he'll do XYZ and he will follow that up by going to get a job. I mean, if he doesn't work, you can find a job in many different places. You can find a McDonald's. You can find a checker job. I know I know this is not, you know, the ultimate job that the man wants to do. I know this is not going to make him, you know, extremely rich. But he's got to start somewhere, you know. Make some money. Get into the game of, of job hunting. You know, find a, find a, a quick job and then... You know, try to try to parlay that to a better job. So, and then right. and then also work on the music thing, the record store thing, on the side until that actually takes off. And when it does, he could be all into that, and that would be totally dope. Uh, you know, if it takes off, but got to start somewhere. And it sounds like he's not started yet. Still, nope. So still living with his mama. Exactly. All right. Well. Uh, yeah, man. Jay t- told y'all the place to, to go ahead and send your relationship questions, send your um, confessions. So uh, now's that time. You know, where Jay cues the music and we have you tap your love box. <laughs> so if you ever got stuck in an Instagram rabbit hole of finding profile pictures of women and men dressed up as either babies dogs and cats wait what tap your love box oh man huh i accidentally got stuck in a rabbit hole um 
Shout out to Just Just in Time podcast. Uh, and I don't know what it's called, but it's basically cosplay where people dress up as babies, act like babies. They have pacifiers in their mouth. And then also another version of the same thing where people dress up as dogs and cats. And these aren't like characters from a show, right? These are like actual, like they're dressing up with like a dog face on or a dog mask on. You know, somebody's walking around with them with a chain around their neck. You know, uh, or they're like I what that's called. kitty cat with like furry fingers and like acting like they purr. It's weird, dog. Yeah, it's very weird. I forgot what that's called, but it's it's wild. I'm yeah, not, it's wild. I'm not talking Doja Cat. You know, I'm a cow. I'm talking like real deal. Yeah, is word. I hear you, bro. It's a. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't. There was actually a special on that where this guy was a. <laughs> his dude was like 300 pounds, and he dressed like a baby and slept in the crib. Nah, fam. <laughs> oh man you ever crop dusted the women's section in the department store and then turned around just to see you walked right into it mm. tap your love box yes. <laughs> that was all day yesterday <laughs> <laughs> now that's hilarious it was it really was mm. if you ever crop dusted in bed um you know, with your significant other, so much that they had to—they woke up in the middle of the night while you were doing it, and they had to wake you up and tell you to stop it. Tap your love box. <laughs> I'm not saying. I'm just saying. If you ever gave your significant other a Dutch oven, mm. tap your love box. What do they call the Dutch oven when you actually like open the covers? I don't know. They're like just a regular. Opening oven doors. I don't know. <laughs> it's just like an open pot. I don't know what they call it. Oh man! <laughs> if you are, you know, uh, semi possibly on the edge of thrill to watch this Bobby Brown biopic on BET, tap your lip box. I'm not sure what I think about it. I don't know. Two day special, right? Two night special. Two night special. Two night special. If you ever told somebody to get their bum ass off the couch and get a job, mm-hmm. tap your love box. <laughs> if you know somebody who's a bum, mooching off their parents, hey. tap your love box. If you are um, not proud of your own race uh, and you'd much rather change races, tap your love box. There's a wow. con- there's a confession uh, that somebody admitted. Uh, they they hate their own race. Oh yeah, I've, yeah, I've, I've seen that. Yep, yep, I've seen uh, you know some white people say that because they've hate what they rate their race has done to other cultures and other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've seen that before. What about what about if your own race? Um, uh, what if what about if your own race is shaming you, making you hate your own race because they're shaming you? Uh, or I don't know. I'm trying to give you bad grief. I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. Mm-hmm. But it's a thing. You're you're ashamed yeah, of is. being from the ghetto, or you're ashamed. Oh, there's of a lot of people like that. Kind of stuff. So. Yeah, there's a lot of people like that. Correct, correct. I know quite a few, quite a few. Yeah, yeah, all good. All right. If you've retired from the life of fantasy football, but keep getting asked to to get back into it, tap your love box because <laughs> they they keep begging me, man. Yeah. Keep calling me like that crap keeps calling Pookie and New Jack City. Mm-hmm. Calling me. Keep calling me. But I'm retired. I'm staying strong. I'm retired. Right. Um, just to let you know, I deleted your profile uh, from Thank you. our <laughs> from our uh, hashtag Blackout Fantasy Football League. Uh, but you know, there are some people who came back for it this year. Um, so uh, yeah. you know, shout out to them for that. Uh, Nelson came back. His brother Hector came back uh, from the Super Toro Bros show, which is still on hiatus. Um, yeah. 
you know, there's there's a few other people, <clears throat> a few other shows that came back, like Defender Radios. Uh, they came back. Uh, so yeah, shout out to them. But um, yeah, man, Jay, we had to kick you to the curb. And my son actually uh, picked up a team. So it's all good. It's all good. Ten, 10 plus years of playing. It's time for me to retire, man. Yeah. yeah. Time for you to get out that game. Yeah, maybe I'll come back and uh, make like a Hall of Fame visit. Maybe do like a, mm-hmm. I don't know, something be like later on. Mike, be like Michael Jordan, leave after a couple years, then come back. Um, yeah, it's uh, possible. You know, yeah. not as good as you were before, but you know, you've done more things in life. You're more seasoned. You know, you had to play for the Washington uh-huh. Wizards. Oh, after oh that time he left. I thought you was talking about the. I thought you was talking about <clears throat> after the third championship, left for a couple of years and come back to win three more. Yeah, nah. Yeah, I forgot about that. See, I wiped the Washington Wizards thing out of my mind. That's out of my memory. Yeah. I think. Nah, nah, fam. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. Maybe in the future I'll do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 If you still think Eminem garbage even after this kamikaze yeah. <laughs> tap your love box yeah. I don't think he garbage I just don't think he's like God status like everybody else claims I don't think it's garbage I just think it's I can't listen to him like I used to you know I can't I can't bang Marshall Mathers over and over and over again like I did back in the day so if you think it's jacked up that Jeffrey Owens from the Cosby show who played Alvin is now bagging groceries at Trader Joe's. No. Tap your love up. So Jack. Elvin so is. So messed up, man. Elvin is, Dang. man. Elvin, bro. Really? Really, really. Really, really, really. Here, I seen you the link. Anyway, it's so messed up. Where are them residuals? Nothing. Let's see here. Oh, and he can't get any uh any of that. What was that payment called? The uh, not well that, but since they canceled, like no more Cosby shows are being played. Oh dang! Anywhere, yo. so he can't get any any of those checks. Wow, he's really he really lost. Man, yeah. see what you did, Bill Cosby. You see what you did. Everybody, Bill lost. Cosby, a bum. Damn. Bill, you mess it up for it, man. You got Elvin out here, the nicest dude. Remember, Elvin was like nicest, the nicest dude. He was, uh, you know, he was, uh, uh, you know, seemed like he would be a good dad. You know, mm-hmm. like he seemed like like the perfect underling, you know, to Theodore Huxtable, Cliff Huxtable, whatever. Thing. Um, uh, and <laughs> just Theodore. and um, yeah, man. You got Elvin out here, uh, you know, bagging groceries at the grocery store. It's so sad. Is that really him? It does seem to You for sure? I think so. It has to be him. It looks like him. I mean, it could be like a Dominican version of him. It looked like him. No, I'll be. Dang. Man, that's so sad, man. But you know what, dog? At least he's not... At least he's not just sitting at home not doing anything. At least he got a job somewhere. Yeah. And it's just messed up, man. I just don't want to see him like that because he got stains all on his shirt. Yeah, yeah. That's true. I, that just, that don't look bad, man. I mean, that don't look good. That looks bad. It said he still acts occasionally. He works at Trader Joe's uh, and he ministers to others in need. So, that's you good. know, maybe you know. he just changed his life for the better. You know, and, and this is the other thing. This is the other thing. What if this man had banked a ton of money, you know what I'm saying, from sure. from the Cosby show, and he's just out here doing something just to do something, you know? Yeah, if you're the, that is true. If you're the type of person who always wants constant interaction, uh, you know, with someone, um, you know, maybe that's maybe that's what you do. You know, you, you go and you just find something to do, I guess, to, uh, to uh, 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 what is the word? You know, to, to, to talk to people on a daily basis. Yeah, just keep active. Yeah. Have that social interaction, yeah. You're right. You're probably right, man. Yeah. He probably did. He looks he looks like the type of person that's like financially uh 
literate. He knows how to save his money mm-hmm. and um, you know and spend it where he needs to spend it. Yeah, you know. But, you know, maybe someday I'll be like that. Get to the point where I can save a ton of money and just go work at Kroger or something. Yeah, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Maybe I could be a Walmart greeter. You know who's jacked up? Um, who is it? Oh man, I'm trying to think about this. Somebody has a food truck that you would not have expected to have a food truck. What's the lady's name from Friday? She was the crackhead. Oh, um, Felicia, I forgot her name, real. Felicia, right? By Felicia, right? Yeah, um, yeah. So let's see here. I need to find this because she has a food truck now. You can cook. Okay, Jackfruit Cafe, right? The Jack Jackfruit Food Truck. Um, if you look it up on Instagram, uh, Felicia, you know, from Friday. She goes out to um, she goes out and she serves plant based foods, um, you know, out in the uh, out in the hood, you know, in Compton, you know, California, okay. uh, in That's places nice. where you know you see a bunch of McDonald's, you know, you see a bunch of Burger Kings, you see a bunch of nasty fast right. food, uh, you know, which you know has attributed really to the to the uh, you know to the to the bad health of a lot of black people in the black community so she goes out there with um you know with hamburgers with tacos with the with the taquitos uh you know with um you know some vegan mac and cheese you know all plant-based stuff uh you know to help people eat right and apparently she's doing you know pretty darn amazing out there so yeah shout out to her uh you know if you're ever in that part of california um you know definitely look for that jackfruit food truck um it's supposed to be pretty dope. Um, she does breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, you know, different kind of menus. And nice, nice. Getting a lot of notoriety. So, you know, it's one of those things. Like, she didn't have to do this. You know, obviously, you know, she's made a, a measure of money from, you know, her thing on Friday. Um, but, you know, she wasn't one of the main stars. Uh, but she still, you know, has taken, taken her money, you know, and used it the right way. And uh, she has a son that's... Um, that's in the NFL right now too. So wow. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So wow. So yeah, man. You know. Good for her. Never know. Never know. Anyway. Yeah. I I don't know what else I got. Man. Uh, I don't know either. I'm just All yeah. Right. Let's 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 just get let's on. Let's kick this into the curve. Since we like it two hours. That's not real. All right. That's not real. It's a lie. This this imaginary. All right, <laughs> everybody. Contact us. Twitter and Instagram, hashtag Blackout Pie, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, SoundCloud, Spreaker. And if you're lucky, you'll catch it on YouTube if it doesn't get like a copyright strike. All right. Email us topics, confessions, hashtag Blackout Pie to gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Hit us up with the with the with your voice. Grace us with your vocal presence on the show. 3853BLAKPC that's 385-325-2572 hit our boss box dot store get yourself a boss box subscription 10% off when you hit at blackout 10 in the checkout mm-hmm. and as always thanks for listening we appreciate each and every one of you guys even the ones way in Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan and Overseas in the Middle East, listening to us. Yeah. And all in South America, Latin America. I don't know if we have any Australian listeners. I got to check the statistics. Yeah. But thank you. Yeah, we have we have it all over the place. And yeah, hit us with your pictures of yourself and cat cosplay and doggy cosplay. Yes. And um, gorilla cosplay. Gorilla cosplay. If you did a good Harambe, show it to us. Yes. Oh, yes. Alright, black now. Black now.